everybody. This is Pastor Heather with The Niche. I want to welcome you all to our weekly podcast uh, that we have just started a couple of weeks ago. We're really excited um, to, you know, just take a few minutes and try to share with everybody um, a little bit as far as our church family goes and our local community, um, what we're doing at Real Family Church and uh, maybe the series or the topic that we are discussing. Well, for the month of February, as we've said, this is the month of love. We just celebrate uh, Valentine's Day, which actually fell on Sunday. So we just pray that you all had a blessed Valentine's Day. And um, the series that we have been in is from the book of the Song of Solomon. And uh, this week we are, um, we have discussed actually chapter three and chapter four. So there's eight chapters in uh, the Song of Solomon. So for four weeks, we're going to be discussing two chapters per each week. So we're in week two, and uh, this is chapter three and chapter four. Well, just to highlight a couple of things uh, that we had discussed, we see in chapter three, primarily somebody called the Shulamite woman who is speaking. And then in chapter four, there is a response to the Shulamite woman from her beloved, who is in fact Solomon. Well, when we look into the scripture, um, and just to highlight again, verses 3-1 says, By night on my bed, I sought the one I love. This is the Shulamite woman. She said, I sought him, but I did not find him. Well, she gets up out of her bed, she leaves her home, and she starts going through the city looking for her beloved. And there are watchmen that are patrolling the city during the night, and she goes to the watchman and says, have you seen my beloved? And then immediately after that, she turns and she sees her beloved. And then in verse 3, um, chapter 3, verse 4, she says, Scarcely had I passed them. So scarcely had she gone past the watchman when I found the one I love, and I held him and would not let him go. Now, I want you all to think about the four levels that we talked about in uh, the Song of Solomon. One, we see the natural level, which is uh, the relation, the love relationship between a man and a woman. Uh, we can see that all the way back to Adam and Eve. They are the first couple, the first marriage. The second level is the story that we're just reading line for line. That's the Shulamite woman to the beloved man, which is Solomon. The third level, the Shulamite woman can represent Israel because this story was written during that time. And um, the man could represent uh, Jehovah, God the Father, and that love relationship. And then the fourth level, which is where I really want us to see things for us now, is uh, the Shulamite woman can represent the church, the beloved church, we are the bride of Christ, and then the man is Christ himself. So when you hear these words that the Shulamite woman is speaking about her beloved, which is Solomon, I want us to think about that these could be our words speaking and thinking about to Christ. And then in chapter four, we see the reversal where Solomon speaks to the, Sol uh, the Shulamite woman, and it could be Christ speaking to us. And if we keep it in that symbolism, then it's a beautiful uh, love story between Christ and the church. So let's keep going. So she passes by, she finds him, and, and then she says when she sees him, she doesn't want to let him go. Well, in verse 3, 5, she says, I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, do not stir up nor awaken love until it pleases. So this tells us that you must actually be able to awaken love before it's time. So this is an indicator that Christ is telling us, look, I have somebody for you. Just wait for that person and don't jump into something maybe before uh, your time. So, you know, we are to love Christ and Christ is, is loving us as well. So let's move on. Verse 3, 6. So who is this coming out of the wilderness? We see that she starts making references to Solomon himself. She sees him coming out of the wilderness. And um, the first reference she says is in verse 3, 7. She says, Behold, it's Solomon's couch. 
Well, what does that mean? Let's go further. In verse 3-9, she continues to say, Of the wood of Lebanon, Solomon the king made him a palaquin. Well, what is a palaquin? A palaquin is a portable bed or a couch that could be open or enclosed <clears throat> that is mounted on two poles and it's carried at each end on the shoulders of four to six men. So really you're only gonna be on that palaquin if you're royalty. So she sees her beloved King Solomon coming towards her and there is this wonderful love for him. And then 311, she says, and see King Solomon with the crown with which his mother crowned him. Well, remember, Christ is King of Kings and he's Lord of Lord, and he's crowned with many crowns. That's what the book of Revelation says. So we are married and we are married into royalty. We don't get secondhand stuff. We're not orphans and we're not leftovers. We are, uh, Revelation says, you know, kings and priests with Christ, joint heirs, we're joint heirs with him. So we are united and one to royalty. Well, let's move on to chapter four. So this was the Shulamite. Her eyes are fixed on her beloved. And this is all descriptions of what she's saying. But then in chapter four, it switches gears. In this dialogue, now it is uh, the her beloved, which is Solomon, and he is now speaking to her. And in verses one through five of chapter four, we have this beautiful description of him describing her. And it's, it's too long to go through it right now. But if you read Song of Solomon, chapter four, verses one through five, you'll see that description. And I'll put up a, a picture for you to see that as well. But it's a symbolic description of his beloved bride and her beauty. And then in verse four, nine, she go, he goes on to say, you have ravished my heart, my sister, my spouse. You have ravished my heart with one look of your eyes, with one link of your necklace. Well, it's very interesting, this uh, terminology that he's using, my sister, my spouse. Well, uh, in fact, she is not his sister. But what it is and what it means is a term of endearment. And it's, it's a phrase implying a very close or a strong bond uh, that would be representative of like the relationship to Adam and Eve. It is the marriage covenant. But we also say too, think about, um, you know, when you become a Christian and, and you are in the family of God, you know, we say a brother of Christ or a sister of Christ, you know, or sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so. It's a term of endearment. So this is the same kind of a thing. And then in verse 412, he makes um, a comment. I am going to read that. He says in verse 412, it is a garden enclosed is my sister, my spouse. Again, he says that twice, a spring shut up and a fountain sealed. Well, what does that mean? A garden enclosed and a spring shut up and a fountain sealed. Well, what this in fact symbolically is saying is that she has, she is pure. She has not been with another man and that uh, she is a virgin. And because of this, um, there is this pure, undefiled relationship between Solomon and the Shulamite woman. So to finish this out, what I really want everyone to see in closing is that, you know, this relationship that we see between Solomon and the Shulamite woman is, as I said, um, a picture and a shadow and type of Christ to the church as well. But you know, what if you're not in a relationship with somebody or um, maybe you're single or maybe you're young or maybe you're only dating or, you know, maybe you've lost your spouse. All those things can be. This is why I want you to see the fourth relationship because Christ is your husband. If you've received Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, he is your husband. And you can put your heart and your trust into him. And he calls you beloved. And you know, there isn't one thing that he will not withhold from you, his love. If you would, but open up the door of your heart to him. Open up your heart today.
He wants a relationship with you. If you do that, He will come into you and be joined with you and be united with you. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this small teaching. You know, um, we've gone through this on Sunday morning, and this is just very quickly highlighting. But I, I pray that this series has been a blessing to you. Um, one thing that you can do that can be a blessing for all of us is share it. And the more that you share these videos, the more they get out and people can see them and uh, be blessed by it. So thank you all for joining me today. I pray that you have a blessed week and uh, I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.